Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. This is your host, YouTube's favorite power bottom, Jordan. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get back into some systems design with all the layoffs going on as I've covered plenty in this channel uh, and view hoard, of course. Uh, you know, it is a great time to get studying and go ahead and get really good at this content so that you can, you know, pass your interviews in the future. So, today we'll be talking about read committed isolation, a topic that I personally have been putting off as, uh, to quote my ex-girlfriend, I am scared of commitment. So let's go ahead and get into it. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get into the iPad portion of this video. So the subject of today's content is read committed isolation. So before we can actually go ahead and get into what that means, let's talk about databases a little bit. So in the past, we've mentioned that databases are multi-threaded. And so effectively what multi-threaded means is that we have a bunch of reader threads, a bunch of writer threads, basically a bunch of concurrent executions happening on the same computer. And so we don't actually know the order of those executions and as a result of that, we can have a lot of issues that uh, basically threaten the correctness of our results. So as you can see in my graph here, you know, in time one we would have a writer thread, time two we would have a reader thread going, time three we have a different reader thread. But the point is, because all of these are being sent at around the same time, there's not really any good way for us to know exactly what's being written first and then what's being read. I mean, this could happen in a completely different order. And so we don't know about the legitimacy of our results. It's really hard to tell. And so we need to go ahead and put in some precautions. So basically what this does is it introduces a lot of race conditions. So before we uh, you know, talk about some examples of race conditions that we might see in a database, I just want to introduce some terminology, which I've kind of mentioned in the past, but let's go ahead and make it official. So this concept is actually going to be the word commit. Committing a write basically just means that uh, you know the write is confirmed in the database. For example, if we have a sequence of writes, you know uh, I'm writing in one row and then I'm writing in a second row, those two writes are only committed when both of them are successful, right? So if I've written in the first row but I haven't yet written in the second, we know that that first write is not yet committed. So they have to all be finished. Okay, so let's talk about some examples of race conditions. And so the first one is going to be called the dirty right. So the dirty right, while it sounds like a sex position, is not in fact, it's something that happens in databases. So let's imagine we have two threads, right? We've got T1 and T2, that stands for threads, not time. And then the time axis is actually gonna be going down this way. So as you can see, as we go down, that's kind of the order of what operations are happening. So imagine we have basically two different rows on our database, maybe two tables in the database and one row from each. One is going to be our you know, bathwater table, and then the other is going to be our delivery addresses table, for example. You know, great, great example, right? So our bathwater.purchaser, uh, T1 is basically me, right? I am going to go ahead and try and purchase some bathwater. So I'm setting the purchaser to Jordan. At the same time, our former president, Donald Trump, is also trying to purchase the same bathwater. We have similar taste in women. And so he is going to go ahead and set bathwater.purchases to Donald. Makes sense. Similarly, though, his right is reaching the database faster than mine. So now he has address.deliverywater is the White House because that's where he wants it sent to. And I, of course, want it sent to your mom's house at T4. So basically, our rights go ahead and get interleaved, even though my right of I guess technically got there first, he was able to get both writes done before I could. And then we're both committing at time five. So now what ends up happening basically is as a result of this dirty write, we see that um, you know the, the purchases row has Donald set as the value, so this one wins. And then as far as the delivery water goes, because you know Donald was after Jordan, as far as the delivery water goes, your mom's house wins over the White House. So now we have inconsistent results out of our database. And effectively what a dirty write is, is when writing over uncommitted values. So in this case, as you can see, none of our writes had actually committed and we just wrote over them. And so the problem with that is that we can then get in this inconsistent state and that is going to break some invariance of our database. So how can we actually go ahead and think about fixing a dirty write? Well, what would work really nicely is something like locking. So if you're not familiar, locking basically just means that, you know, if I have the lock on a certain row, no one else can do anything with that row, right? They have to be able to grab the lock, but they can't until I release it. So let's imagine this one is me, this one is Donald, and then, you know, we're both trying to grab two rows to write to them. So let's imagine first, I grab the lock, now I have it. 
Donald says, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to do the same thing because I want to write. Guess what, buddy? You can't. I already have it. So that's not going to work. Now you might say, oh, well, Jordan, what if he grabs row number two and then you try and grab row number two and then, you know, now you're in a deadlock because neither one is going to release either of the locks uh, and effectively we both want each other's resources and we're never going to give them up. Well, I would argue that one solution is you could just grab the rows in the same order. The database could somehow decide the ordering of the rows. Or if worse comes to worst, you could do some sort of deadlock detection, which is a thing in, you know, some kind of pieces of hardware like databases where they'll actually look for resources in deadlock and if that's the case they'll have to make one of those transactions give up its locks. Okay, so row level locks are basically how we go ahead and fix dirty writes, which is writing over uncommitted data. However, dirty writes are not the only issue that we're talking about today. Another one is dirty reads. So again, we've got two transactions where the vertical axis is going to be time. Sorry for my crappy arrows. So in this case, basically we've got transaction one which is me removing $10 from my balance because I have bought more foot pictures from Karina Kov. In transaction two, you know, maybe it's me checking my bank account balance and seeing that I am $10 down, right? Similarly, now Karina Kov is going to be receiving 10 more dollars. But what if the right to Karina Kov receiving 10 more dollars fails? For example, who knows, maybe her bank account is now invalid or, you know, she was laundering a ton of money and now her account has just been deactivated. The issue now is that I have gone ahead and read an uncommitted write, right? Because Jordan balance minus $10 was not actually yet committed. The commit happens down here because the commit only happens once both of these writes go through. And since the Karina Kopf one failed, I've now read an incommitted, uh, or not incommitted, but uncommitted write. And so basically a dirty read is reading, God, I can't spell today, reading uncommitted data. And obviously that's a problem because now if I'm reading my bank account balance, I think that I lost $10, but I still don't have my foot pictures. And so that is obviously going to be an issue. So how can we go ahead and fix dirty reads? Well, there are a couple of options. The first one is we could do row level locking, like what we did before, right? Let's scroll back up here. I could do row level locks because I would have to grab the relevant row uh, in order to basically read it, but I couldn't read it yet because someone else had it locked because they were writing that row. However, that's kind of a pain in the ass. The reason being that locking is slow. And if we can avoid having locks, that is very good because it means that anytime we're writing something, all of the other threads trying to read it are going to be unable to do so and they're going to get bottlenecked significantly. Reads are much faster than writes and as a result, you know, one slow write can slow down a ton of reads. And so it would be much better if we could just avoid using locks in general. So basically the fix here is that we want to store the old value until the commit. Right, so let's imagine my bank account old value was 100, then I buy those foot pictures, so we've got new at 90, and then the second Corinna Kopf gets hers uh, to a plus 10, then we switch that pointer over to new, and now guess what, we're reading from this value. So this is how we're able to do this, we just have to store an extra value, and this way, even though we're incurring a little bit more storage overhead, we are greatly decreasing the amount of locks that we have to wait on, and speeding up our database significantly. So again, that's why I have this right over here. Could use locking, but much more expensive. We shouldn't be doing that. So ultimately, I've now covered two types of race conditions, right? We've got our dirty reads right here, and then scrolling all the way up, we've got our dirty writes. So basically, ultimately, any database that is going to protect against both dirty reads and dirty writes is one that is implementing read committed isolation. And so now you know what that term means. Basically, the point is, if we're protecting against those two, this database is considered to be read committed. However, we should note that there are many more race conditions than just the ones that I've outlined in this video. And in subsequent videos, we're gonna go ahead and talk about those. There are basically, you know, others that are even more pesky and harder to catch. And so the databases that do protect against those obviously have to use more complex solutions. We'll talk about those in the future videos and I will see you guys next time.